On a remote stretch of Texas coastline, SpaceX has built the largest and most powerful rocket launch facility in history. Three billion dollars, 3,400 employees, and a rocket taller than the Statue of Liberty all come together at a place called Starbase. And what happens here could determine whether humans ever become a multi-planetary species. The vehicle at the center of it all stands 121 meters tall and produces twice the thrust of the Saturn V that carried astronauts to the moon. October 2024 brought something most engineers thought impossible. A 71-meter booster falling back from space got caught mid-air by giant mechanical arms attached to a tower, and landing legs became obsolete in a single flight. Everything about this facility operates at a scale that defies easy comprehension, from the manufacturing bays to the propellant tanks to the ambitions driving it all forward. September 2011 marked the first time Elon Musk publicly mentioned wanting a private launch site. Seven locations across the country made the shortlist, including sites in Alaska, California, Florida, Virginia, Georgia, and Puerto Rico. Texas won out, specifically a peninsula in Cameron County sitting 20 miles east of Brownsville and just two miles from the Mexican border. Geography played a major role in the decision because the southernmost point of Texas gives rockets a boost from Earth's rotation when launching eastward. But isolation mattered too. Musk described the appeal bluntly in 2018. We've got a load of land with nobody around, so if it blows up, it's cool. The FAA gave its approval in July 2014, and the groundbreaking ceremony followed on September 22nd of that year, with Texas Governor Rick Perry standing alongside Musk. Back then, SpaceX projected $85 million in investment and around 300 jobs for a site that would launch Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy rockets. Those numbers look almost quaint now. By 2018, everything changed when Musk announced Starship would be the sole focus of the entire facility. The original plans went out the window, and what replaced them required reimagining the site from scratch. On March 2, 2021, Musk tweeted about quote one. Four years after that tweet, on May 3, 2025, local voters approved incorporation by a count of 212 to 6. Bobby Peden, who serves as SpaceX's vice president for Texas operations, became the first mayor of an actual city called Starbase. Understanding why Starbase had to be built this big requires understanding what it launches. Nothing in aerospace history comes close to Starship's dimensions. When the Super Heavy booster and Starship upper stage are stacked together, the complete vehicle reaches between 121 and 124 meters depending on configuration, which translates to roughly 400 feet of rocket towering over the Texas landscape. 5,300 metric tons sit on the launch pad when the tanks are full, equivalent to the mass of 12 international space stations. People who've stood at the base describe themselves as looking like ants next to it. 33 Raptor engines power the Super Heavy booster, generating between 74 and 80 meganewtons of thrust. Converting that to more familiar terms gives you 16.7 to 18 million pounds of force, which more than doubles what the Saturn Vess F1 engines produced during Apollo. The booster alone holds 3,400 tons of propellant split between 2,700 tons of liquid oxygen and 700 tons of liquid methane. Only 13 of those 33 engines can gimbal for steering, while the outer ring of 20 stays fixed in place. The upper stage adds another 50 to 52 meters of height and carries six Raptor engines. Three sea-level versions handle ascent and landing, while three vacuum-optimized variants take over for orbital operations. Payload capacity to low Earth orbit hits 100 to 150 tons in reusable mode, and that number climbs to 250 tons if SpaceX chooses not to recover the vehicle. The cargo bay alone offers about 1,000 cubic meters of space, enough room to park a large bus inside. What makes the Raptor engines special goes beyond their size. Each one produces roughly 2.3 meganewtons of thrust at the highest chamber pressure of any operational rocket engine, running at 300 to 350 bar. The Space Shuttle's main engines operated at 206 bar, and Saturn V's F-1 managed just 70 bar. The structure dominating Starbase's skyline stands 146 meters tall, including its lightning rod, making it the world's tallest launch tower, according to Guinness World Records. 
but height isn't what makes Megazilla special, and that nickname came directly from Musk himself. Two massive articulated arms, each roughly 36 meters long, ride on a carriage that moves up and down the tower's rails. These chopsticks can open, close, and swivel to grab vehicles. Shock absorbers and active dampening systems give them the ability to catch a descending super heavy booster at specific hard points between the grid fins. The whole concept eliminates landing legs from the booster entirely. That saves considerable mass and allows SpaceX to restack the booster for another flight almost immediately. Aerospace veterans raised eyebrows when the plan first surfaced because catching a 71-meter rocket stage falling back from space with mechanical arms sounded more like science fiction than engineering. October 13, 2024 proved it could work. During the fifth integrated test flight, the chopsticks grabbed Booster 12 successfully for the first time. SpaceX's statement kept it simple. Quote 1 NASA Administrator Bill Nelson called it Quote 2. Those same arms also handle stacking, lifting the Starship upper stage onto the Super Heavy Booster for integration. A sophisticated quick disconnect system feeds propellant and electrical connections before launch. After the April 2023 first flight tore up the pad badly, SpaceX added a water-cooled steel flame deflector made from two thick steel plates with perforated channels that blast water upward during ignition. Engineers describe it as working like SpaceX approaches testing differently than traditional aerospace programs. Rapid iteration beats waiting for perfection, and destroyed prototypes represent valuable data rather than embarrassing setbacks. Starhopper completed a successful 150-meter hop on August 27, 2019, and that kicked off years of aggressive testing. A series of full-scale prototypes flew between 2020 and 2021 with SN-15 becoming the first Starship to nail a complete high-altitude flight profile and land successfully on May 5, 2021. The integrated flight test program began on April 20, 2023, combining Super Heavy and Starship for the first time. That flight lasted roughly four minutes before multiple engine failures sent the vehicle tumbling and the flight termination system destroyed it. Worse than losing the rocket, the launch devastated the pad itself throwing concrete chunks as far as six and a half miles and starting a three and a half acre fire. What followed shows how quickly SpaceX iterates. November 2023's second flight achieved the first successful hot staging separation before both stages exploded. March 2024's third flight reached space, but broke apart during re-entry. By June 2024, Flight 4 delivered controlled splashdowns for both stages, with the booster hitting its target with what engineers called half-centimeter accuracy. October 2024 brought the first booster catch on Flight 5. January 2025 added a second successful catch on Flight 7, though a propellant leak destroyed the upper stage. Flight 9 in May 2025 marked another milestone when Booster 14 flew again after its previous catch, proving reuse actually worked. 11 integrated test flights have taken place through late 2025. Six achieved their primary objectives, while four boosters have been caught successfully by the tower. The fully reusable system SpaceX envisions keeps getting closer with each flight. Starbase spreads across roughly 350 acres and never stops operating. The Star Factory produces vehicles continuously using an iterative approach to manufacturing and a new $506 million gigabay facility is going up with promises of over 1,000 additional jobs. The tank farm holds enough propellant for one orbital launch with some margin to spare. That means approximately 4,950 tons of liquid oxygen and between 1,400 and 2,400 tons of liquid methane stored in 9-meter diameter cryogenic tanks wrapped in 12-meter outer shells for insulation. Getting that propellant to the site currently requires more than 100 tanker truck deliveries per launch campaign, costing somewhere between $700,000 and $900,000 just in logistics. SpaceX started building an air separation unit in July 2025 to produce liquid oxygen and nitrogen on site, which should cut those costs significantly. Lind, the industrial gas company, is also putting up a $100 million facility in Brownsville to shorten delivery distances. A second tower reached full height in August 2024 and got its chopstick arms by January 2025, 
Tower 2 incorporates lessons from the first, including an integrated flame trench instead of the bolt-on solution that had to be added after the pad damage. The original tower is being rebuilt for compatibility with upgraded vehicles, while Tower 2 handles launches through the transition. Economic impact on the region has been substantial. SpaceX reports $800 million flowing into Cameron County annually and received a 10-year county tax exemption for the project. August 2024 brought another major shift when SpaceX moved its headquarters from Hawthorne, California to Starbase. Boca Chica Village predates rockets by decades. A Chicago developer founded it in 1967 as Kennedy Shores to attract Polish migrants, but Hurricane Beulah destroyed the utilities that same year. The community never recovered. By 2008, only six people still lived there permanently, and some described it as a ghost town. SpaceX started buying property through a subsidiary called Dogleg Park LLC in 2012. September 2019 brought formal buyout letters to remaining residents offering three times the appraised fair market value on a take-it-or-leave-it basis. Several homeowners complained that appraisers never actually visited, relying instead on county tax assessments that ignored improvements they'd made over the years. Reactions split among the residents. One woman known as Hark, quote, to Turl, set up 24-hour live stream cameras and developed a following among space enthusiasts worldwide. Others pushed back against the changes. State Highway 4 provides the only way in or out, and it now closes during rocket operations under a permit allowing SpaceX up to 800 hours of road closures each year. Environmental approval proved complicated. The 2014 Environmental Impact Statement covered Falcon rockets, not Starship. When SpaceX switched entirely to the larger vehicle, the FAA had to conduct a new programmatic environmental assessment. A mitigated finding of no significant impact came in June 2022, but only with more than 75 conditions attached. Those conditions include wildlife monitoring, lighting modifications, and annual payments to conservation programs. The lower Rio Grande Valley National Wildlife Refuge sits nearby, making U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service involvement essential. Specific concerns center on endangered species. Kemp's Ridley sea turtles, the most endangered sea turtle species on Earth, nest less than a quarter mile from launch facilities. Piping plover populations in the Boca Chica area dropped by 54% over three years after operations began. Snowy plovers reportedly declined significantly and became nearly absent from the launch area. Environmental groups sued after the April 2023 first flight scattered debris across hundreds of acres of state park land. Federal Judge Carl Nichols sided with the FAA and SpaceX in 2024, ruling that the environmental review fell within a broad zone of reasonableness. May 2025 brought expanded FAA approval, allowing up to 25 Starship launches annually, five times the original limit. Everything happening at Starbase points toward one goal, putting humans on Mars. Musk has never treated this as distant aspiration, and the facility's design reflects that single-minded focus. NASA's Artemis program, represents the nearest high-profile use for Starship through the Human Landing System contract. But the NASA Aerospace Safety Advisory Panel warned in September 2025 that the schedule appears significantly challenged and could be years late compared to the planned 2027 moon landing. Musk's Mars timeline remains aggressive. May 2025 brought his estimate of quote two of launching five uncrewed starships to Mars during the 2026 to 27 transfer window. Those vehicles would carry Tesla Optimus robots ahead of human missions targeting 2029 at earliest. Though 2031 looks more realistic, the longer view extends decades out. Musk stated in September 2024 that settlement quote three. His reasoning comes down to survival. Quote 4, Musk explained in May 2025. Quote 5, Flight 12 preparations continue with the first Block 3 vehicle, featuring significant upgrades, and stepping back reveals what SpaceX has actually created here. Starbase stands as the first privately owned orbital launch facility in American history, built from nothing on private land rather than repurposed from government infrastructure. 350 acres host launches from the most powerful rocket 
ever to fly successfully, taking up less than 1% of Kennedy Space Center's sprawling 144,000 acres. Super Heavy's 74 to 80 meganewtons of thrust exceeds Saturn V by more than double, nearly matches two NASA space launch systems, and triples what Falcon Heavy produces. No first stage has ever generated more thrust and made it to space. Whether routine Mars transportation becomes reality remains an open question. Schedules have slipped repeatedly. Vehicles have been lost in testing. Orbital refueling and heat shield durability still need full solutions. But $3 billion in investment, 3,400 employees, and 11 test flights represent something without precedent. A private company building history's largest rocket on its own dime at the southern tip of Texas. The $85 million originally projected has grown by a factor of 35. 300 jobs became more than 11 times that number. Six permanent residents gave way to an incorporated city named after humanity's ambitions beyond Earth. From this corner of Texas, every test flight, every booster catch, and every iteration rewrites what's possible in human spaceflight. And the next chapter is already taking shape on the launch pad. If you found this video interesting, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss our next deep dive into the engineering marvels reshaping our world.